Dear colleagues, you can see the radial branching opaque lines in the sub anterior capsular region in this cataractous lens. It reminds me the horns of a deer that is an antler. So I have named it antler cataract. I have taken up this case for surgery. Let us watch the surgical steps. By this time, the main incision 2.8 millimeter and two side ports have been made. Now I am going to stain the anterior capsule with tripan blue dye underneath this air bubble. Here goes the dye. The dye stains the anterior capsule in a very short time in 5 6 seconds. So after 5 6 seconds, you can wash the dye out of the anterior chamber. Now you use a viscoelastic substance. I use hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, only SPMC. And in this case, the SPMC is being sprayed over the epithelium for better visibility. And now I'm taking a 26 case bent needle incising the capsule and raising this flap and now see the use of utrita forceps see the utrita forceps is tainting the anterior leaf of the main incision and leakage is very minimal and the anterior chamber depth is not lost and you can complete the rexis at on go However, if you see that the antechamber is becoming shallow, come out, inject some more viscoelastic substance, and then complete the rexis. And now, since this is a hard cataract, be very careful and very gentle in doing capsular rexis. Inject little bit of fluid at multiple points, depress the nucleus posteriorly, and try to mobilize the nucleus and you will find that the nucleus rotates freely now inject some more viscoelastic substance and now is the time to enter into the eye with the FACO handpiece this is the ECT of Oatly FACO machine Oatly Catrix 3 you go bevel down, then rotate it and make the bevel up. And in this case, I am going to do direct job. Make two, three sculpts. Go to a deeper level. Cross the central part, the hard part. Go near the axis margin. And this is you, how you separate the Heminuclei. Be very gentle. And if the nucleus is brittle like this, the pieces, the nuclear fragments, becomes become free, and you can emulsify it and remove it. This is how you hold it. You enter into the lens using position 3 of echo 2 and then come back to position 2 that is just aspirating mode hold the nuclear mass with high vacuum and then use the chopper and now emulsify each fragment If you find that the anterior chamber is very stable, if there is no surge, don't worry at all. Be at the iris plane or even below and emulsify the nuclear pieces. Give more respect to corneal endothelium than you give it to the posterior capsule. That's it. In this case, we can see there's a plaque on the posterior capsule. Uh -huh. 
and sometimes we need ear glazer for better visual gain however in this case without ear glazer the patient will get quite good vision the opacity is not much now i'm using a simco cannula to remove the cortical matter The plaque on the posterior capsule cannot be polished out. If it causes some hindrance to visual gain, we have to do YAG laser capsulotomy. That's it for the cortical matter which is there at 11 o'clock. In the sub incisional area, I've used by manual because the side port on the left side was too small to introduce the Simco cannula. Now, I'm going to use a B cartridge, and for that, I'm enlarging the main incision to 3 millimeter, just one cut. And the 2.8 millimeter incision has been increased. To 3 millimeter and it will help me in delivering the nucleus easily that's it this is a single piece hydrophobic aspheric intraocular lens the lens has been placed in the capsular bag now we very thorough in removing the viscoelastic substance that you have used some surgeons use sodium hyaluronate before implanting the intraocular lens the reason being the sodium hyaluronate is easier to remove than it is for the SPMC the sodium hyaluronate molecules are large and it comes out in a bolus but SPMC doesn't come like that now after cleaning cortical matter uh, after cleaning the viscoelastic substance with Simco cannula for some time. I introduced the irrigating probe or bimanual IA and do some more irrigation over the anterior chamber, inside the anterior chamber and behind the lens that is the capsular bag. And now I use both irrigation and aspiration together for the final wash. So I have spent about two minutes for removing the viscoelastic substance. If we use irrigation only for implantation of intraocular lens, these two minutes can be saved. If the chamber becomes shallow, then I use an air bubble to keep the antechamber formed and then I inject a bit of moxifloxacin then I hydrate the side boards to make the zones waterproof to make these openings watertight that's it after Hydrating these side boards, a final wash is given. During the final wash, I remove the viscoelastic substance that sticks to the corneal endothelium with a Simco cannula. Here it is. I 
um, irrigating at this time and all the viscoelastic substance that sticks to the corneal endothelium comes out. Now the interchamber is formed and the case is concluded. Please be very meticulous in your steps. Please give utmost respect to the cells, not tissue, to every cell. If you do SICS, don't use cautery to oppose the conjunctiva. Rather, use a suture, a releasing, releasable suture. That's it. The case is concluded. Thank you very much. Always before concluding, check if the wounds are leaking or not.